Thank you for joining me. Organite's How to Make Organite. I'm going to show you today how I make my Organite with over 50 different crystals. Now, strangely enough, I do ask the permission before I smash them up into the tiny little pieces. I had a strange experience last time I didn't. I put tons of selenite, usually a few different types, a few different types of shungite, turquoise, amethyst, lots of paste and diamonds, and 50 other crystals just to add those good frequencies in. Once I add those 50 crystals into the molds, I'll then be able to put them into the molds. Now, once I set up my molds, I will first off, safety first, I like to put on gloves. I usually use a very industrial strength glove so that I don't have to worry about anything. The disposable ones tend to be a little bit better for me, but you can definitely get ones that are non-disposable so you don't have to use it. Now, the mask is probably the most important part. I always wear a high filtration mask that's designed to protect from all the chemicals from pouring resins. Um, now, once I am safetyed up, I will then take my large molds. I have my little Giza molds and make sure that I'm organized. I do a lot of different things like putting the Triskelions in the bottoms of my pyramids, and I've heard those help as well. The larger Triskelions there, I mean, I've actually read in a book on Shungite that the Triskelions naturally assist in the EMF protection. Um, I have big ones and little ones that I put in the pyramids. There's my quartz wrapped crystal with copper wire, and I'll put those in all my pyramids as well. For the larger pyramids, I do use uh, gold plated wire and we'll add those into the pyramids. Now I put a blend, like I said, of 50 different crystals into all my pieces. So you can see that there, just tiny little pieces of each crystal are added into every single piece. And I put them into all my molds and all my little tiny little things. So you can use, I mean, frogs, little tiny uh, baking dishes. I like to use the silicon ones because they pop out easier. Copper is probably the one thing I add the most of. The finer the metal, the better. So the tin there is one of my favorites because of just how fine it is. It's almost like dust, but I don't really like the dust dust ones as much. I use aluminum flakes though, brass flakes, and I just kind of have fun with all the different layers. As I layer it up, I'll add different metals in so that it can add different appealing looks to each piece. And I just, like I said, find the finer the metals, the more effective the piece. And the more dense the metal, the more effective. Now, once I take that resin, I will add some hardener. Once I add that hardener, I'll have to quickly pour. And then about 20 to 30 minutes after I pour, I'll be able to add the crystals into the mix. And I usually like to leave the top of the pyramids clear so there's no metal in the top. So I'll usually have to wait a little bit for that first layer to harden. And then I'll add my 50 crystals in after I add the crystals. And I just sort of have fun with it. There's not really any right or wrong way to make them, just the more metal, typically the more effective. So I'll just try to find a good balance of making them look pretty and making them have a lot of metal. And I'll actually, in the bigger pyramids, keep adding that 50 crystal blend all the way through the pyramids. So top to bottom, I mean, the big ones get tons of doses of the 50 crystal blend. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of fun with just different colors, pouring them into different things, adding different metals, and it's, it's more of a fun process. And then once I basically finish each layer, I'll add another layer in, and then voila, it's all done. I know that's a lot easier to, to just watch me do that really quick. Now, once I'm done, I will obviously keep waiting for each layer to harden put my gloves back on, and then I will keep adding more metals. And as you can see here, I add a little bit more resin hardener in there, and then I mix that in. And I do find the ones with the resin hardener tend to shrink a little bit more and create a better piezoelectric effect. And then the Triskelion is also supposed to add an added benefit. So you can see that I put the Triskelions there on the bottom. I add more crystals in. I really have fun with it, and I also find it makes it effective as well. Now, once I'm done with the Triskelions, I'll finish up by adding a few different designs in the bottom with the larger pyramids, and then I'm all finished. I'll let them dry for a few hours, and once they're dry, I can pop them out of the molds. Like I said, the silicone molds tend to be a little easier. The phi molds makes my 
uh, larger pyramids as well as my sacred geometry molds and that's PHI molds on Etsy. There's all my metal shavings there. As you can see, I have quite a few different types of metal shavings that I can use. And I'll find those on eBay or scrap yards and recycled metal yards. And there's a lot of different ways to actually get free metals as well. Now there's some more of my molds from Phi Molds. Now, once I'm done, I'll let them sit there for a few hours and then I'll be able to unwrap the molds. As you can see, my pyramids are taped up. And then when I untape them, I'll sand them a little bit to get all the rough edges off. And you can find my really pretty ones online. I'm like, I have some really great one of a kind pieces on the website, organites.com. Thank you so much for watching.